As per Google, Tiger's Nest or Paro Taksang Monastery is the most searched tourist destination in Bhutan. But how difficult it is? Can a person with average fitness complete the trek? Is there any easier way? What is the best time to visit? We shall discuss everything you need to know before you plan your trip. We started a little late for the trek, but I would highly recommend that you start by 7 from Paro so that you reach the base by 7.30 and start the trek by 8. Sooner you start, you get less crowd and have more time for resting stops. So folks, we have uh, reached to the starting point of uh, Taksang Monastery or Tiger Nest Trek. And we need to get tickets from there. So for adults, we need to pay 2000 rupees and for the child, we need to pay 1000 rupees. And it is applicable only if you want to go inside the monastery. So if you don't feel like you know going inside the monastery or if you don't want to complete the entire trip, don't buy tickets. And some of our team members are going to take the pony to reach the halfway point. We need to pay 1,200 rupees per pony for going up to the cafe. So are you all excited? Yes. What about you? Yes. <sighs> Calm, serene and there are places to sit after you come back to settle yourself before you start the journey. It is 11.15 now. Let's see how long it takes. So two of us, myself and Shivabroto, along with our guide Norbu, we're going to try to walk our way up and uh, rest of the people, they are taking the ponies. So we are just waiting for a few minutes for, for the ponies to start and then we will proceed. I'm not sure whether you were able to see this, but the monastery is up there. The pony will take you only up to the Taksang Cafe, which is the halfway mark of the trail. From there, you have to complete the trek by your own. It may be a good way to save all of your energy for the final ascent. There's a temple over there, which fits perfectly into this ambience. The trek usually takes around 2 to 3 hours each way depending on your fitness level and pace. The distance of the trek is around 3.5 kilometers each way and it is considered as moderately difficult trail though I have seen elderly people also to complete the trek but having a good fitness and proper pair of hiking shoes will definitely help. So the trek officially starts from here. There's a beautiful stream and some beautiful temples. It took around, I think 15 minutes hike from the base to reach this point. So the trail gets steeper from this part. The base of the trek is situated at 7,500 feet above the sea level and the highest point is at 10,335 feet. So there is an elevation change of almost 2,800 feet in just 3 kilometers, which makes the trail quite steep at places. Take your time, don't rush and enjoy the hike. There are places to sit here. If you need to take some rest, look at this wonderful valley. Wow, breathtaking. So Norbu was making real fun of me. He said the way I am pulling off my clothes one by one, by the time I reach the monastery, I may end up being naked. Better did you enjoy the trek? <laughs> These guys are returning from the halfway. That is also an achievement. 
especially with kids and all if you are able to do trek till the cafe and i believe from there also you get a good view of the monastery Though we enjoyed the beautiful sceneries along the trail, it is said the best time to do this trek is between September to November, because during that time the entire trail is covered with autumnal colors. Oh, it's tiring for people like me. We could see the monastery up there, but that's a red herring. <laughs> because a lot of work to do what ponies <laughs> yeah these are our ponies coming back aur kitna dur hai bhaiya 5 minute okay so there 5 minutes means our at least 20 minutes <sighs> we stopped in between and taking some rest shivu are you running out of gas <laughs> Don't forget to carry lot of waters and energy bars with you because you will definitely need to replenish your energy. I think other folks they have already reached the cafeteria okay. and waiting for us. So I think we are the laziest travelers you came across. No. No. I have I have had some worse experiences as well. So those guys were blasting loud music from their phone. This is not done, yaar. You enjoy the nature, spend good time at the same time you pay respect to this place don't play loud music don't behave like a city jerk hi there hi 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 norway is telling us the rest of the path is not tough but i don't believe him <laughs> i don't believe you norbu yeah. <laughs> so this is the half year of the trek and the cafeteria is little up there Yeah, so we are getting these sticks because from now on we are going to need it. We are entering Takshang Cafe. This is half of the way. We are going to rest here for some time, and maybe we will proceed for the rest of the way. Hey. So there is the Takshang Cafe. My Amsu is waving hand. So just for a little bit of information. in zonka amsu means wife wow just look at that view unbelievable <sighs> feeling quite cold up here hey how was the pony ride very nice we nice. enjoyed thoroughly oh is it i, I was talking to the pony oh, okay you maybe you could take it back home The indoor and outdoor sitting areas are designed to create a relaxing atmosphere where visitors can unwind before or after a trek to the Tiger Stress Monastery. The cafe offers a range of dishes including traditional Bhutanese cuisine and international dishes as well as variety of hot and cold drinks. Sipping into a hot cup of coffee while having a mystic view of the monastery is priceless. Guys, we are all set up for the final ascent. We have recharged ourselves, feeling quite energetic. Hopefully, we should be able to make it to the top. So, let's go. Okay, stay safe at the cafe. Asiam, bye. This is tough. No way, this is easy. Morbu, I don't believe you. We are now feeling cold, but unable to put anything to cover our nose and ears because we are losing breath. 
So if you see a figure here, you'll see one like the portrait. Mm -hmm. He used to be our, you know, like our chief abbot, a head of a central monastic body. And this guy, you know, he is one of the highly learned Buddhist master in our country. So his mother was pregnant and uh, she came to work, you know, like it's kind of volunteer work. So while she was doing, like she gave birth, he was born in this cave here. Oh. Okay. And the most interesting thing was, you know, when he died, he was in a meditating posture, okay, like, so that means, like, he hath attained enlightenment, you know, like. <laughs> can sit for some time and regain some of your breath. I think we are going to do that. These resting places are also good for having talks with fellow travelers and share some lighter moments. I hope you are enjoying this journey along with us. If you are able to make it, that will be your success as well. This place is so serene. Look at the valley. It looks magnificent from here. And I see some people, they are going back. The master started very early. Wish we could also do that. So a pile of plastics here also in a pristine place like this. Please don't throw plastic bottles or any plastic wrappers here. First of all, don't carry plastic bottles if possible. I always carry a reusable water bottle while hiking. If you could do that, that would be great. Otherwise, if you are bringing some plastic bottles, do take that back with you. down a little bit to get a better view. Paro Tigers' Monastery, also known as Taksang Monastery, is a sacred Buddhist site located in the Paro Valley of Bhutan. The monastery is perched on a cliff and is considered to be one of the most important pilgrimage sites in Bhutan. According to the legend, Guru Rinpoche, also known as Padma Sambhava, flew on the site on the back of the tiger and meditated in a cave here for several years. It is believed that he subdued local demons and converted Bhutanese people to Buddhism. The monastery was built in 17th century around the cave where Guru Rinpoche so, meditated. The view from here is spectacular. If you have made up to this point, be proud of yourself. That is the Takshan Cafe and I'm feeling proud after making this far. But the real challenge I believe will be to go to the monastery. Don't be fooled by the look. It is not that near. We have to go all the way down and again climb all the way up. And that is going to be really steep. It's quite steep than it looks. Yeah, uh, this one is, uh, it's called a tata, okay? And uh, the reason for building this kind of thing is mm -hmm. that, you know, like, somebody dies, so after cremate, his uh, ash. leftover ashes, tatas are made, and then it is kept in a uh, thing. Holy places, high mountains. We have reached this waterfall. From there, we have to climb our way up to the monastery. So if you are not interested to go inside the monastery, you have not, uh, you know, uh, bought the tickets, you can come up, to, come up to this point. Otherwise, just, you know, carry on. So that is the entry gate of the monastery. And I think we are almost there. So, we made it to the monastery entry point. We need to keep our camera, mobile, all the electronic items over here. 
As I entered the monastery, I was greeted by a serene atmosphere. The air was filled with fragments of incense stick and I could hear the monks chanting prayers. The main prayer hall was magnificent with intricate murals and a golden statue of Guru Rinpoche. Unfortunately, photography or videography is not permitted inside. And now we need to go down there, take that way and go all the way up. <sighs> that will be quite a task. But anyway, we will definitely do that. We are feeling positive after coming here. By this time, the temperature was dropping drastically and we could see icicles forming on the rocks. Let's target 20 steps at a time. Not tired. Not tired? No. There are so many steps. Quite steep. So we are done with the ascent and we have lost all of our bread. We stopped here to have some banana and some other food to recharge and refill ourselves. Suddenly drizzle started so I had to put all of my cameras inside the bag and I could not film till we reached the cafe. There is no one in the cafe, in fact the cafe is closed now. The last 30 minutes of our walk was completely through the darkness. It was difficult and very risky because there are leopards and bears in that forest. This is one more reason for which you should start your trek early, especially if you are traveling in the winter days. We did it. We finally reached the base. <laughs> ah. Nice, nice. We successfully completed the tiger nest or Takshan Monastery trek. Last 30 minutes, like we literally walked through dense forest during the complete darkness. We deserve special mention because we walked all the way up. We are going for hot stone bath, which is very, very much required. We had a very bitter experience while taking hot stone bath and I'm going to create the next episode on that. Do watch it before you take hot stone bath in Bhutan because it is about your health and safety. I hope you have enjoyed this video. If so, give it a like. Don't forget to comment and do watch other videos of the Bhutan travel series. Until we meet again, stay safe and stay happy.